In this video, we're going to look at the subjunctive in Spanish, which is a sentence structure that helps you talk about things that you're not sure that they're going to happen, where there's some doubt, or there's an emotion involved like hope or wish or a desire that something will happen, and a few other common scenarios that you'll come across in Spanish, including certain sentence structures that are really common. The way that most people go about learning it is looking at lots and lots of conjugation tables trying to memorize them, and really stressing out about the situations when you should or should not use them. Instead of doing that, today what we're going to do is look at a handful of examples, look at the context first, and just try to wrap our heads around the general idea of the subjunctive. So this is just a general overview. It is not an in-depth guide to everything that there is to do with the subjunctive. We're going to get a general overview just looking at the present tense so after this, you'll be able to watch a video or listen to something in Spanish and hear the subjunctive and start to make connections in your own brain that don't have anything to do with you memorizing a million verb forms and can just sort of start to build that intuition for yourself. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Connor. This channel is called Breakthrough Spanish. And in it, I try to help you simplify Spanish so that you can speak confidently faster. Let's take a look at a few of the different situations when you might use the subjunctive in Spanish. The first one is to express a desire or a preference or a wish that something will happen. For example, quiero que me llames. I want you to call me. In English, we use the verb plus the infinitive. I want you to call me. In Spanish, you say literally, I want that you call me. Quiero que me llames. Or, espero que tengamos tiempo. I hope that we'll have time. Second situation is to express doubt. Like, dudo que sea verdad. I doubt that it's true. Dudo que sea verdad. Or, no creo que venga Pablo. No creo que venga Pablo. I don't think Pablo is coming. A third situation for the subjunctive is to give advice. Es mejor que no viajes solo. It's better that you don't travel alone. Or, te aconsejo que lo pienses bien antes de tomar una decisión. I'd advise you to think it over well before making a decision. The fourth situation is one that you have almost definitely seen before, and that is with the word que plus a verb in the subjunctive, as in que tengas un buen día, have a good day, or que te vaya bien, take care, have a good day. In all these situations, we have que plus a verb in the subjunctive, and that expresses a desire that something will happen. I hope that you have a good day. I hope that you have a good time. We also use the subjunctive with a few really common sentence structures or sentence patterns. First one being para que, so that, para que, para que no hagas, so that you don't make. The next sentence structure would be with antes de que before something happens. Tenemos que terminar antes de que sea muy tarde. We have to finish before it gets really late. This last structure would be with sin que. Sin que, as in without. Literally without that. Trata de salir temprano sin que tu jefe te vea. Try to leave early without your boss seeing you. One way that I like to think about the subjunctive is as the opposite tense. Opposite tense because with an AR verb, you'll see an E in the ending. With an ER or an IR verb, you'll see an A in the ending. So for example, with hablar, instead of tu hablas, it'll be que tu hables. Espero que hables con tu papa. I hope that you speak with your dad. Or with an IR verb like escribir, to write, it'll take an A at the end. So for example, quiero que escribas esto. I want you to write this down. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this quick introduction to the subjunctive to be helpful, not too overwhelming, and I hope it gave you a general sense for how it works so that you can start to recognize when the subjunctive is being used in actual context and start to get a general sense for how to start using it yourself. If you want, you can leave a sentence of your own using the subjunctive in the comments, and I'll be happy to give you feedback. And if you want to keep working on your Spanish, check out this video next. See you next time.